Konnichiwa, friends, and welcome back to the Family Fudge. Today, the family and I are traveling to Tokyo, Japan. I haven't been here in almost 20 years, and for the rest of the family, it's going to be their first time. Come along with us as we board multiple flights that almost didn't happen, and we'll explain why our canceled flights ended up being the best thing ever. We're going to take you along with us through our first 48 hours in Japan. This includes how we're navigating the city, a tour of our first Airbnb, a fun meetup with another YouTube family, and we'll take you with us as we hunt for cherry blossoms. So friends, come join our family and let the travels begin. Now, in my last video where I showed you everything I packed for this trip, at the end of that video when I finished filming, that was just about three hours before we were supposed to leave for the airport. And that also happened to be about 3 a.m. I did not sleep at all. It was at this time that we found out that our flights were canceled. But we just got notified that our flight has been canceled. Now at first, talking with the airline, it looked like we might not be going at all because so many of the alternative flights were either fully booked or if they did have six seats, none of them were together. So all of the kids would have to sit next to strangers for over 12 hours. Now after about an hour of going back and forth with the airline, they were finally able to find us different flights but that's only because they gave us an upgrade. We were going to be in Comfort Plus, that's the economy section with some extra room, but then they upgraded us to Premium Select, which is kind of like a business class. Now our first flight ended up being from Orlando to LAX in California, and that was about five hours. Now I was so glad that I packed everyone their own breakfast sandwich for this flight, because even though this was early in the morning, and five hours long, they only served snacks and drinks. Once we got to LAX, we only had about 10 minutes before we had to get on our next flight. We were cutting it so close. From LAX to Haneda Airport was going to be another 12 hours. On our 12 hour and one minute, uh, we'll try to cut that one minute out and make it even 12 hours for you. We appreciate you choosing to fly Delta. And you guys, at this point, I was feeling so thankful that we were on board and we were actually going because so many of the things that we had pre-booked in Japan were going to be non-refundable. So things like Disney and certain hotels, we were going to be out all of that money. And of course, I was also super thankful that we had the upgrade to larger seats with more room. But you guys, even though we were in sort of a business class, some things weren't quite as expected. As you can see, the seat in front of me was kind of falling apart and hitting me in the leg. Now, luckily, my husband John was able to pop it back into place, so it wasn't hitting me the entire flight. Another unexpected thing was that each of these seats came with a footrest. We got a really fluffy pillow and a cozy blanket, and they also gave us some slippers. These were so nice. We didn't have to wear our shoes the entire time. Then, in this little pouch, they gave us an eye mask, some socks, a toothbrush and toothpaste, some earplugs, and a lip balm. Now, as far as entertainment goes, they did have lots of movies and TV shows. Lily chose to watch The Wizard of Oz, that's her favorite. And each screen came with its own remote. Now, the food service was really nice. We actually got a little tablecloth. They gave us real cups and tableware. But honestly, the food itself was just okay. For dinner, I had the chicken, which was a little bit dry. This also came with crackers, a salad, and some little cream puffs 
on the side for desserts. And for my drink, I had ginger ale. Now for the kids, they had the pasta option. This was kind of like lasagna, but with white sauce that had no meat and lots of cheese. So they liked it, but then all of their sides and their desserts were the same. Pretty much right after dinner, they turned off all the light and we all got as much sleep as we could. Closer to landing, they did serve a breakfast. The choices were yogurt with granola or scrambled eggs with potatoes. But you guys, it was still really dark in the plane, so I didn't even film it. Now, we landed in Tokyo around 2 p.m. And the very first thing we did when we got off the plane was have our first experience with the fabulous and high-tech Japanese bathrooms. Now, I know this might be an odd thing to share, but you guys, Japanese bathrooms are Best. Not only are they super clean, but they're free and they come with lots of buttons and gadgets. This one even had a little seat called a mama's helper. That way you can put your toddler in there if they're with you. This one also had an automatic sound machine and that's to just disguise any bathroom noises. And just in case you weren't sure, they had some very clear instructions on how not to use the facilities. From there, we went through customs and immigration. And even though we filled out all of the forms ahead of time, it still took us over an hour to get through everything. The lines were very full. Before we left the airport, we made sure to stop and get some IC cards for each person in the family. Now we could have gotten something called a welcome Suica card, but since that line was crazy long, we went just around the corner and we bought some PASMO passports instead. Now with these IC cards, in Japan you can use them for the train rides, the buses, some vending machines, and you can even use them to pay for things at convenience stores like 7-Eleven. So these are very necessary. When it comes to leaving the airport, one of the best things we decided not to do was to take the train from the airport into the city. With all of the kids and our suitcases, we decided just to book a private transfer instead. This picked us up from the airport and it took us directly to our Airbnb. Now we booked this using a site called Fluke, which is a travel agency. This private transfer wasn't exactly cheap, but I think it was totally worth it. We didn't have to worry about getting our luggage on the trains. We didn't have to worry about figuring out which train to take. Unfortunately, we did make that mistake when we visited Paris and it wasn't a fun time. And just as a side note, you guys, in Japan, there is a service where you can forward just your luggage to your hotel, and that is another great option. But number one, we weren't staying in a hotel, and then number two, they actually charge between $20 to $30 per suitcase when you do that. So if you times that by six people, you can get pretty pricey. Because our Airbnb wasn't really that far, it just worked better for us to hire a van to take us and all of our luggage all at once to our Airbnb. For our first Airbnb, we decided not to stay in the heart of Tokyo. Instead, we stayed in this area. That one was it a lot cheaper, but it was also not as busy, not as loud. It was still close to the train station, which is important when visiting Tokyo. So as you enter, we find the area called the Ginkan. That's where you must, must, must take off your shoes. Otherwise, it's very rude. And it looks like there's a little storage space for your shoes and some house slippers. Very nice. So down here, we have one little bedroom with a double bed and a little toilet room. Then here is a separate area. See, we have a washer, a little sink, and a shower, very nice. And now to go up to the next level. Ooh, these stairs are very steep. Okay. So you have a little table area, very tall windows. Right over here is the little living room, some couches, and a really cool chair. And then back over this way, we'll find the kitchen. Not huge, but definitely has enough space. 
And then check this out, you guys. They are so good at recycling here. And they have a different bin for each of the different items. So we have a microwave, a fridge, just the basics. And then right off of this space, we have another little sink area and another toilet. I'm glad to see there's more than one for our large size family. For, okay, and then, well, and now we're going up the next set of stairs. Whoa, these are steep as well. Okay, so in here we have two double beds. It's a really cool. No eating or drinking in the bed. Let's see. Oh, there's the dining room down there. And then over here we have another little double bed. Due to jet lag and the time difference, we were all up and awake really early the next day. And since it was Sunday, we decided to go ahead and figure out the train lines so we could head out to explore. of train stops later, we made our first stop of the day, which was to Paws Church. We received such a warm welcome, and while we were there, we met up with fellow YouTubers, the Ryder family. Now, they have a channel called Life in Japan that you should definitely go subscribe to, and if you do, let them know that the family fudge sent you. After that, we were definitely needing some lunch and some dinner, so we spent quite a lot of time exploring a local grocery store called OK. We needed to stock up. And friends, stay tuned because I will be sharing some grocery hauls, including a trip to Costco in Japan, in some of our future videos. Normally, when it comes to a cherry blossom season in Japan, it's usually done by this time. So when we found out that they were actually delayed this year and that we could still see them, we made that the next thing on our itinerary. Now to see these cherry blossoms, instead of following the crowds into Tokyo, we decided to head west again to a very lovely place. This area was so cute and clean, and it wasn't crowded at all. Hey guys, I am no expert, but I did look this up and it said that the Japanese people have loved cherry blossoms or sakura since ancient times. The flowers represent life, death, beauty, renewal, and optimism. Cherry blossoms have such a short lifespan. They usually only last about two weeks and it's usually a time to get out with your family or your friends to view them. Now, while we were there, the cherry blossoms were just starting to fall and it almost looked like snow was raining down. It was so beautiful. It was so nice by the water. There were actually huge fish in there that you could see. And thankfully, nobody fell in that water. Hey, Mommy. Yeah? I have a question for you. What's your question? Can you sign to like that? Oh, that sign says no dancing or no falling. You think it does? No, no dancing. That's against the rules. I'm so glad the kids got to experience this, and I'm also happy we got to share this with you guys. Coming up next time on The Family Fudge, come with us as we explore Japan's version of Walmart. We'll show you some awesome foods from 7-Eleven, and for dinner, we're checking out some conveyor belt sushi. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.